have a major update on the AEW future of Mercedes Monet, but first, two AEW stars have officially been suspended. With AEW All In London officially in the books, the show has been slightly tainted by some backstage news that came out during the event. Whilst I'm not going to cover every report that's emerged, with there being questions on who started what and who initiated what, let's talk about what we do know for a fact, and I'm only going to try and cover the essential information as to not dwell on things that we don't know for certain in this he said she said situation. A few weeks back a report would emerge from Fightful Select that revealed at a recent AEW collision taping Jack Perry was keen to use real glass as part of a backstage segment, something that was shot down by production, management, medical staff as well as Tony Schiavone who works in talent relations. It was then said that CM Punk who has an unofficial leadership role on the Saturday Night Show was then asked to step in to talk some sense into the young wrestler. This incident was then mostly forgotten about until the AEW All In London pre-show, which saw a spot involving Jack Perry and Hook and a car windscreen with Perry calling over the cameraman before saying, you know what this is right here, real glass, go cry me a river. This being a clear jab at the Second City Saint and something that set off a whole chain of events shortly after. Regarding the incident at All In, details coming from both camps are vastly different from the other making it currently impossible to know who initiated the next part, but what we do know is that things became physical between CM Punk and Jack Perry in the gorilla position as the latter came through the curtain, where CM Punk was waiting to make his entrance for his match with Samoa Joe to kick off the main card. Some accounts say it was Jack that initiated the fight, whilst others claim it was CM Punk that laid the first hand, as well as some combinations of one approaching the other whilst the other took the first shot. Whatever the case, it's now been confirmed that both men have have officially been suspended from All Elite Wrestling pending investigation, something that has been confirmed by both Sean Ross Sapp of Fightful and Brian Alvarez of Wrestling Observer. This now likely means that both will miss the upcoming AEW All Out event in Chicago, as well as the collision dynamite tapings leading up to the event, which is particularly noteworthy when it comes to Punk, who is the company's leading draw in the city. Now with all that said, allow me a minute just to vent a little bit as to how this tiring situation can be solved. As I mentioned in a video literally last week, the current attempt at a solution to prevent incidents involving CM Punk and the Elite and Friends is only a temporary band-aid with a roster split clearly not the answer. The only solution is to sit everybody down and hash it out, whether that to be to agree to work a program or to simply coexist in the company, otherwise shots are going to be continually thrown, leading to constant confrontations. Whilst there has been talk of common denominators, the most prevalent prevalent one is Tony Khan's lack of ability to tell those that work for him to do as he says or else, and that includes both sides of this mess. Another constant is the leaks to the media from both sides to get narratives out there, and these leaks from both sides need to stop. Although this is difficult, because there always seems to be somebody willing to vent to certain journalists, leading to a response from the other camp to retort as to not allow a whitewash of information from just one perspective. Whether it be the leaked rumours that CM Punk was responsible for Colt Cabana being removed from AEW, the varying accounts of what happened in both fights, or the Jack Perry real glass story getting out. This leaking is another constant in the situation that doesn't help anybody and only damages AEW's business. The first port of call for such complaints has to be internal management and not Dave Meltzer, Sean Ross Sapp, Wade Keller, Nick Hausman, or any other journalist, and consequences need to be put in place for those that leak such stories from within. It's only damaging the company and in the long run its continuation could have fatal effects on AEW. Everybody needs to end the but he did this first, he did that first, he leaked this first, he leaked that first mentality and it's just time to stop. It's tiring and the fan base are getting fatigued on both sides of the fence. There's a place for Jack Perry in AEW, there's a place for CM Punk in AEW and there's a place for the Elite in AEW and now it's time to end the rant. Next up, we have some details regarding the recent passing of Bray Wyatt. Last week, the wrestling world was hit with some terrible news when it was revealed that Wyndham Rotunda, better known as Bray Wyatt, had sadly passed away following a heart attack caused by issues stemming from a recent battle with COVID. TMZ have released more information on how the passing would occur, with them revealing that he was asleep at the time, and TMZ would say, 
WWE superstar Bray Wyatt experienced a series of heart complications in the months leading up to his death, and a doctor recommended heart defibrillator was not with him when they found his body. Wyatt told his fiance he was going to take a nap Thursday, and she became concerned when she heard his alarm going off for about an hour later without stopping. The report says Wyndham was discovered in his bed, not breathing, and was turning blue. Wyndham's fiance called 911 as her mother attempted CPR, but he was later pronounced dead at the hospital. Cops spoke with Wyndham's immediate family members who said that he had COVID in March 2023 and developed heart complications causing him to have a weak lower part of his heart. It was also stated that one week prior to the incident, Wyndham was hospitalized with a heart issue, with him then being advised to wear an external heart defibrillator, although the device wasn't worn at the time of the heart attack. Though it's unclear if this would have saved his life, investigators later found the device in his vehicle on his driveway. Regarding what's next, it's been revealed that with funeral services set to take place soon, Sean Ross Sapp of Fightful has revealed on Twitter last night that this could lead to some potential absences on the upcoming episodes of AEW. Dynamite and he would write, there may be some absences on AEW Dynamite either this week or next week, whenever they are. Tony Khan offered the show off to anyone who wanted to attend Bray Wyatt's services. This is of course a classy move from Tony Khan and AEW, as it's clear that many on the roster were close with Wyndham. And next, two former WWE superstars have officially retired. This weekend, the National Wrestling Alliance would host their 75th anniversary special show live from St. Louis, Missouri, with night two being headlined by a match for the NWA World's Heavyweight Championship. The bout would see Tyrus put his title on the line against EC3 in a bull rope match, with the champion not only putting his belt on the line, but also his in-ring career. In the end, it was EC3 that left with his hand raised this NWA ending Tyrus' 289-day reign with the belt, as well as his 17-year wrestling career. In wrestling, Tyrus is perhaps best known for his time in WWE as Brodus Clay, this following a stint as the bodyguard for Snoop Dogg. He is now a fixture of the Fox News channel, where he appears as a political pundit. He isn't the only former WWE superstar to have hung up their boots, however, as Gunner, previously known as Jackson Riker in WWE, would wrestle at an AML wrestling show in Salisbury, North Carolina last night. Following his win over George South, Gunner would leave his boots in the middle of the ring, this after announcing in May that he plans to retire in August 2023. And next, a top wrestling star is heading to Impact Wrestling. One of the key featured stars of the AEW All In London event was Will Ospreay, who would overcome the challenge of Chris Jericho in his home country of England. Shortly following arguably his biggest win to date, an announcement would drop from Impact Wrestling that revealed the current idea WGP United Kingdom champion is set to make his return to the company at the upcoming Bound for Glory pay-per-view. The event is set to be held inside Chicago's Cicero Stadium on October 21, with the Aerial Assassin's opponent yet to be confirmed. Over the years, Osprey has wrestled in Impact five times, with all appearances taking place during the company's UK tour in January 2016. Next up, a major WWE star is set to return. Previously, it had been confirmed that former WWE champion John Cena was set to make his return to the company on the September 1 edition of SmackDown, this ahead of the Superstar Spectacle Show in India the following week. Well, it seems that Cena's return won't be as brief as first thought, as he has now been confirmed for almost every episode of SmackDown going forward until October 27, with him booked for eight shows in total over the next nine weeks, with him only missing SmackDown down due to the Indian show. The only episode Cena will miss is the September 8th episode of The Blue Brand. It remains to be seen who Cena will be feuding with on all of these appearances, although we do know that he is set to team with Seth Rollins to battle Ludwig Kaiser and Giovanni Vinci of Imperium at Superstar Spectacle, perhaps a sign that he's set to enter a rivalry with WWE Intercontinental Champion Gunther, which is something Cena recently teased on social media. And next, a former AEW star has officially signed for WWE. Back in July, Brian Pillman Jr. would part ways with All Elite Wrestling following the expiration of his contract, with him taking part in a tryout at the WWE Performance Center shortly after. According to a fresh report from PW Insider, Pillman has now signed a deal with WWE and is set to start with NXT this week after finishing up his dates on the independent circuit. The report notes that whilst the signing is 
complete. There is currently no rush to debut the second generation star on television as the plan is to get him used to the performance center and the developmental system. In July, it was reported by Fightful Select that WWE had immediate interest in bringing Pillman Jr. on board, interest that has now been followed up on officially. And next, a former WWE superstar looks set to return to the UFC. At SummerSlam 2023, former WWE and UFC champion Ronda Rousey would reportedly wrestle her last match on her current WWE contract, with fans wondering what could be next for the former MMA fighter. According to a report coming from the Daily Mail this week, Ronda has her eye on one last return to the Octagon, with her targeting a fight at next year's UFC 300 events, which will likely be a card stacked with top names. Daily Mail would speak to somebody close to the 36-year-old and they would write, She just had a match at SummerSlam and is looking to wind down her time and commitments with the WWE and she is now focusing on potentially making a run to have one last fight in the UFC and competing at UFC 300 when that presents itself sometime next year. The source would add that Rousey is currently at a crossroads in her life and career as she is looking to see what she might want to do next with TV and film roles a big focus. It's worth noting that when UFC President Dana White was recently asked about reports of a Ronda Rousey UFC return, he shot them down. However, it appears that the new report adds even more fuel to the rumor fire with Rousey seemingly intending to make a return, something that would do huge business for the landmark UFC 300 event. And speaking of Dana White, he would speak with Sports Illustrated's Fan Nation this week where he would shoot down rumors of a Brock Lesnar return to UFC, something that appears to be much less likely than Ronda due to him now being aged 46. With that said, there likely wouldn't be any contractual restrictions to stop this from happening due to UFC and WWE set to merge into one company following the WWE buyout by the Endeavor Group. And next, we have a major update on the AEW future of Mercedes Monet. This past Sunday night at AEW All in London, a very interesting name would be in attendance for the show, with former IWGP Women's Champion Mercedes Monet appearing in the crowd overlooking the night's proceedings. Since January, Mercedes has been the main attraction of the New Japan Women's Division, this following the expiration of her WWE contract, where she used to work under the name of Sasha Banks. The All in appearance, of course, led to speculation on if she will soon make her official AEW debut, something we now have an update on from Fightful Select and PW Insider. According to Fightful, the two sides are open to future appearances and they would note, Fightful Select can confirm there have been recent conversations between the two sides and that she's open to appearing, with one source even showing heavy optimism that the two sides will be working together. Another source spoke as if it was in the works. PW Insider would later provide an update of their own with madding that as soon as Mercedes is cleared, she is expected to begin making appearances for AEW and they would write, for those asking why Mercedes Monet didn't get into the ring or appear beyond being shown in close-ups sitting in the crowd, we are told that backstage she was wearing a heavy walking boot and that she was specifically shot in the crowd sitting to not show that. The expectation backstage is that when she is cleared, she will be coming in for appearances. PW Insider would also note that it was likely Mercedes would have debuted at the recent Blood and Guts Dynamite in the TD Garden in Boston had she not been injured. This was something that we did discuss as a possibility at the time of the show's announcement due to AEW booking a much larger venue than what they did last time when they were in Boston, a clear indication that they had an ace up their sleeve to sell extra tickets. And before you go, make sure you check out 10 facts that MJF doesn't want you to know. 